the important thing is is that two people are willing to work on the issues and and revive a relationship. The reason that stonewalling is so damaging is that it basically breaks the connection. Hi, this is Jim Brown. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things mental health. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, what do you do when you find that your relationship is starting to die and can you repair a dying relationship? You know, the fact is that all relationships go through um, phases where they're strong, where you feel really connected, and then sometimes you don't feel that and, and there's a, a lack of connection or issues come up and, um, you know, the important thing is, is that two people are willing to work on the issues and, and revive a relationship. There are definitely some signs to look for um, to tell you that the relationship might, might be dying. And first of all, you have to identify what's it dying from, you know, because there could be lots of different reasons. Just like if you have a house plant that's dying, you got to figure out like, why is it dying? Is it too much water? Is it not enough water? Not enough light, too much light? So you've got to figure out what, what the relationship needs and try to bring it what it needs. Something to think about when you're looking at a relationship that's struggling is the factors that are contributing to it. And often they come down to four main um, communication issues really that can be devastating to our relationship. And those things are sometimes referred to as the four horsemen of the apocalypse for a relationship. They're basically four um, issues that happen in a relationship that can be fatal to it. And those four things are when there's a lot of criticism. Um, criticism is when you're making complaints, but you're also making it personal. So it's when you're making complaints that are implicitly or explicitly attacking your partner's character. Um, a complaint would be something like, you know, you said you take out the trash and you didn't take out the trash. Could you please take out the trash? Uh, criticism is, don't you care about this place? It's like, can't you tell that, you know, why aren't you doing what you... That's a criticism. And those are things that when you feel criticized, you get defensive. And that's the second thing that can be really fatal to a relationship is defensiveness. If that cycle of criticism and defensiveness goes on long enough where you feel criticized and I get defensive, then I criticize you and then you get defensive, if that goes on long enough, then the third thing that can be fatal to a relationship starts to happen and that's that one or both people start developing contempt for each other. Contempt is when you hear the door open and you instantly think, oh God, what's it going to be? <laughs> what's it going to be today? when you can't stand the sound of each other's voice. And if you allow the, the damaging factors in a relationship to go on long enough to the point that that starts to happen, that's really the most damaging um, effect on a relationship is contempt. Uh, the other really damaging issue in a relationship is something we call stonewalling. Stonewalling is when one person just decides that they're not gonna communicate any longer when they shut down conversations. Rather than engaging, um, they, they walk away or they just, um, they just don't agree to talk about it. So the reason that stonewalling is so damaging is that it basically breaks the connection. When two people are, are, are connected and resonating with each other, they're, they're talking and they're communicating, they're sharing thoughts, they're sharing ideas, they're vulnerable with each other. Um, stonewalling is something that happens a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times it's, it's a man in a heterosexual relationship that will stonewall. And the reason that they do that is because sometimes they fear that if I keep talking about this and I keep getting angry about it, I'm going to say something that I regret later. So they'll just start to shut down the, the conversation. That's actually really damaging to a relationship. A much healthier way to do that is to take a timeout. And a timeout is something like, you know, right now I'm really upset and I don't think I can continue talking about this, but let me take some time to calm down and then let's try again in a half hour or something like that. So 
Understanding those four things in a relationship, those are some of the main things that lead a relationship to, to wither and die. Um, there are other signs that a relationship is starting to struggle or starting to die. And that's when you're, you're losing effort and you're losing connection and you're losing communication. It's when you're just not talking with each other. Um, especially if it's emotional or physical intimacy that's, that's starting to lack. If you find that you're losing effort in communicating, that's a, a big red flag, and that's the time when you really want to start looking at, you know, doing some repair work or maybe getting some professional help. Um, when emotional or physical intimacy starts to leave the relationship, when the passion in the relationship that you used to have starts leaving, that's when you want to look at the, the, the red flags. When you don't laugh together anymore, when, when the, the humor that drew you together in the first place isn't there any longer. Um, when you're having increased feelings of anger, fear, frustration, or even depression. Um, when you start to withdraw from each other and you start to grow apart, that's something that often you can just sense, like there's, there's, there's something really wrong here. Um, that's actually also a time to start looking for professional help. Um, if one of the partners is having an affair, um, if the stonewalling is becoming really common and the arguments are starting to increase, um, if one of you feels like you just need a break, if the complaints are always about the same thing, that's a warning sign. And if you just start to feel like you're no longer compatible, like emotionally, physically, socially, spiritually, um, if you're feeling like you're always bored or you're always angry or you're always ignored, um, if you start to feel alone even when you're together. Other signs that a relationship is in trouble is if you start wondering, I wonder if I could do better. I wonder if, you know, maybe maybe this isn't the right relationship for me, or if your gut is telling you that something's really up. And a lot of those things are warning signs that you need to get some professional help, uh, especially if trust is broken in a relationship. I like to think that any kind of healthy relationship basically needs three things. You need to like each other, you need to trust each other, and you need to respect each other. And when trust is broken, um, that's the time when you really need to maybe seek some professional help to help you put things back together again. Sometimes if you've gone through something really devastating together, that can fracture the connection in a relationship. And you may need help recreating the connection again and learning how to turn towards each other rather than away from each other. Um, when the conflicts start to get dysfunctional, when there's lots of yelling and screaming, it's time to seek professional help. Um, when you get the sense that there's something really wrong here. So that's when you want to think about reaching out for professional help. And there are also a lot of things that you can do to start rebuilding the connection and reviving a relationship that's, that's dying. Some of those things are reconnecting with positive memories. Going back through photographs and looking at old pictures of when you first started to date and remembering those times, looking at old love letters or some of those silly little notes that you wrote to each other, the, the cute little smiley faces you put on the napkin or whatever it was. And look at those things, maybe even look at those things together and rekindle some of that connection. Um, you want to reactivate those times when you, when you really felt connected to each other. You want to look at how did the connection start to fade in the first place? Did I start projecting some of my fears or my insecurities on that other person? Um, and you know, what, what got in the way? Was it our careers? Is there an addiction that's happening that, that needs to be um, addressed or some other kind of diversion? And if that's the case, you've got to look at removing those diversions so that you can start to make the relationship the priority again what you're going to have to do is be 100% honest and allow vulnerability 
in fact, encourage vulnerability. Sometimes we run from vulnerability because it makes us feel anxious. We're, we don't know how, you know, if I'm, if I'm vulnerable, if I expose my feelings and my heart, you know, I could get hurt. And that's true, you know, that is true. But vulnerability is also the way that we develop deeper connection with people. So you really have to invite that into the relationship. And even if it's not comfortable, learn to be comfortable with it. You want to share with each other the things that you miss and the things that you hoped for and remember some of those things. One thing that can be helpful to a relationship that's struggling is to do something called love mapping. Love mapping is a way to get a better understanding of your partner's inside world. So you could do something as simple as, you know, on a, on a date night at home, um, sit and ask each other questions that maybe you haven't asked each other before. Like, what's the one dream that you've always had that you've never, you know, had fulfilled? Or, you know, who are the three people in your life that, uh, that you like the most or, or dislike the most? And just asking questions to get to know each other on a deeper level. Sometimes we haven't really asked those kinds of questions since we were first dating. And if you remember those times when you used to spend hours on the phone at night just talking and sharing and finding out about each other, that's what love mapping can do. It can get you back to that time when you're, you're just learning about each other and you're excited to learn about each other. You also have to set boundaries and you have to atone for past hurts. So that might mean apologizing for things that you've said or done or not said, not done. Um, and atonement means not just apologizing, but also making a commitment that you're not going to do those things again. You want to start to date like you did in the beginning. So think of romantic things that you can do together. Um, you just think about what you did when you were first dating. And that means going out to a restaurant to eat, you know, taking the time and the energy to, to get dressed up and to, to look good for your partner. Think of fun things that you can do, the goofy things that you used to do when you were younger and, and dating. And if you've got kids, you know what, the kids will be all right for one night without you. And if they're young kids, you know, find a babysitter that you can trust. But a lot of times, fall into patterns, you know, especially when you start to develop a family and, and you've got responsibilities and kids and it, it starts to become very insular. But you really got to make time for each other. You've got to have date nights and you've got to set aside time for intimacy um, and, and connecting and keeping the relationship alive. Get away for the weekend. You know, we, we forget sometimes to just plan little little getaways that were really important to us at one point. Um, and you have to also look at your part in the problems and the relationship and be honest with yourself. If, if you're starting to play games, like if you're starting to communicate in passive-aggressive ways, um, if you're giving your partner the silent treatment, that's a form of stonewalling and it's really, really damaging to a relationship. So you've got to get honest with yourself about your part in it. Take accountability for it. Those are a lot of different things that you can do to revive a relationship that's, that's struggling. And you know, if some of those warning signs are there, then think about getting some professional help. Working with a good couples therapist, you can often learn how to repair a relationship. But don't wait too long. That's one of the sad facts of working with couples is that a lot of times they wait until there's so much damage that one or both of them just don't have the heart to keep trying. So don't let that happen to your relationship. You know, the, the fact is that people come into our lives for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. And sometimes relationships after the, the season or the reason that brought you together isn't there any longer. Sometimes relationships just seem to, to fade because there's no reason that keeps you together. If that's the case, sometimes you have to realize that, you know, it, this relationship is not meant to continue. But if both people are committed and both people are willing to do the work, you can absolutely revive a relationship that's struggling and
create a much brighter future for yourselves. I hope this is helpful. Um, if so, I invite you to like and subscribe uh, to the videos. And uh, if you're in California and you're looking for a therapist, you can reach out to me. I'm still doing telehealth in California. Um, if you have any suggestions for things that you'd like to hear about, let me know in the comments. And I'll look forward to talking with you later.